What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh, and with inflation still getting worse, the Federal Reserve Bank was forced to make some of its most drastic rate hikes in decades, and this has pushed markets significantly lower into a bear market. And as a very rudimentary rule of thumb, when you raise interest rates, the goal is to bring inflation down, but that also brings markets down. When you cut interest rates, that brings inflation higher and that also brings markets higher. Now, there are some exceptions to this. This is just a general rule of thumb because if you raise interest rates during a time where you have a strong economy, you have a robust economy, well, that doesn't necessarily mean the markets will go down. Sometimes you'll see markets go up even when interest rates are rising because the economy is growing faster than the growth of interest rates. But we are in a different time right now where our economy doesn't seem to be that strong where it can survive these rising interest rates because we have just begun raising interest rates. Interest rates are still historically very low, yet we're seeing so many companies start to struggle because of these rising interest rates. We've seen so many layoffs. We've seen companies already talk about the verge of bankruptcy because of these rising interest rates. People can't afford buying new homes because of these higher interest rates. So these higher interest rates have been pulling markets down. Now the question is, what is the Federal Reserve Bank going to do next? Because the Federal Reserve Bank is the entity that is in charge of deciding what happens to interest rates. To answer that question, there are four factors that you want to pay attention to. This is what the Federal Reserve Bank is looking at, so this is what you want to be paying attention to as well. It is the CPI, the PPI, the PCE, and the UE. Now, I know this is going to look very intimidating at first glance, but I'm going to break it all down for you, and I'm going to make sure it's very easy to understand. The CPI is the general inflation number where every month you hear about what inflation is. This is that big number that everybody says that we are hitting four decade high inflation at near 9% inflation. That's what the CPI is, the general inflation number. PPI is the inflation number that businesses feel. So CPI is the inflation number that consumers feel when you go to the grocery store, when you have to pay for your gas, when you have to pay higher rent costs, that's the inflation that regular people feel. PPI is the inflation that business owners feel because now when you have to go and produce a product, well, your raw materials are also going up because of inflation. So this is the inflation number that businesses are feeling. PCE is the core inflation number. That's what the Federal Reserve Bank likes to call it, where they take the CPI number and they strip out the volatile numbers. They take out energy costs, they take out food costs because nobody has to worry about these high expenses. But what the Fed says is that energy and food are very volatile and so they don't give a good indicator as to what real inflation is. So this is one of the Federal Reserve Bank's favorite indicators to inflation. And then you have the unemployment numbers. UE. This gives you a gauge as to the strength of the economy because these three numbers will tell you how bad inflation really is. And to fight inflation, well, you have to raise interest rates. And so these three numbers will give the Fed a gauge on how aggressively they need to raise interest rates. But the UE number, the unemployment number, gives the Fed a gauge into the strength of the economy. Because if the economy is strong, meaning unemployment is low, then they will be more likely to raise interest rates. However, if we see unemployment start to go up, meaning that now the economy is starting to slow, well then the Fed is gonna be less likely to continue raising interest rates because now they might get worried about this and the economy. Right now, at the time of me recording this video, CPI is at the highest level since the early 1980s. I think it's the highest level since 1980, where we're just under 9% CPI. So we have some of the highest inflation numbers that we've seen in decades at this top level CPI, but then PPI, which is the producer inflation, the inflation that business owners feel, is even higher than CPI. The producer inflation is above 10%. So what that means is you have these big industries, these big corporations, that are paying more than 10% for their raw materials and they're selling the products at about 9% higher. So producers are actually seeing shrinking profits because inflation is hurting the business owners more than it's hurting the consumers. I know there's a lot of confusing rhetoric going on around there because people are saying, oh, it's greedy corporations that are causing the inflation. However, those greedy corporations are actually being hurt by inflation more than 
people. So uh, that's one thing that you want to be aware of where there is some misinformation being put out there because if you just look at the numbers, this is worse than this. Then you have the core inflation numbers, the PCE numbers. Well, these PCE numbers that came out on June 30th, which was the latest numbers, were very high. Some of the highest numbers that we've seen, but they were slightly lower than what the Federal Reserve Bank expected, which I guess is good news. However, the thing that you want to kind of caveat that with is it takes out things like gas and energy and food. And these are things that people have to pay for. Like, just because the Federal Reserve Bank doesn't look at these numbers doesn't mean that people don't have to pay the price for higher food costs. They don't have to pay the price for higher gas costs. However, even when you take away these volatile numbers, PCE is still hovering near the highest values that we have seen in decades. So we have extremely high PCE. So when you factor all these things together, what this tells us is we have a long and painful inflation fight ahead. So the Fed needs to do more things to fight inflation. But then if you look at the other side, now the economic side, which is the unemployment, unemployment today is extremely low. We are hovering at some of the lowest unemployment numbers ever. So why are people worried about an economic slowdown if unemployment is doing great because people all have jobs. It's because jobs are a lagging indicator. Just because a company starts to get worried about a recession doesn't mean they're going to start laying people off. A company starts laying people off, they start cutting their costs once the pain actually happens and then they start to persist and then the company is forced to do layoffs. So this is where you have to pay attention not just to where jobs are today but to where the unemployment numbers are going. Now an easy way for you to stay up to date on all this type of information of what's going on is just to subscribe to Market Briefs. It is a free free financial newsletter that I created where my team breaks down what's happening in the inflation markets, the economic markets, the stock market, the real estate market, and the crypto market into a free, fun to read, witty, and entertaining newsletter. You can read it in less than five minutes every single morning. So if you want to join Market Briefs and stay up to date on what's happening, I promise you, you are going to love and look forward to reading this email every morning. I'll put the link to how you can join Market Briefs down in the description below. Our economy is fueled by spending. The more money that you spend, the more money that somebody else makes. And so businesses need people to spend money in order for them to make profits, for them to invest in more growth, in order for them to hire more employees, and in order for them to keep their employees. And what's been happening now is over the last year or so, people had built up a large savings cushion. And because of everything that happened with the pandemic, people had extra cash. So the savings cushion helped the economy continue to grow even when people were facing this super high inflation. Because now when you face all this super high inflation, you can't spend as much money as you would have, or you can't spend money on other things that you would have because now more of your money is going to buy you groceries and your gas and pay for your rent and your basic necessities, which means you have less cash to go out and buy other things. So while you might be spending more money, you're getting less stuff just because more of your money has to go to buy your basic life necessities and you have less cash to go and travel. You have less cash to go out and buy nice things at the mall. You have less cash to go out and buy the fun stuff because more of your money is being used to buy the necessary stuff just for you to survive. However, people have still been able to spend because they had this built up savings cushion from the pandemic and because so many people paid down their debts from the pandemic and so people not only were able to spend their savings cushion but then people were able to build up their credit card debts again which is not good news however this is one of the reasons why we saw the biggest boom in credit card debt ever just recently because now people had no other option. They had to spend more money in order to keep maintaining the lifestyle, but inflation has not slowed down. And so now what we're seeing happen is spending is actually slowing down, meaning people are running out of their savings cushion, they're running out of this debt that they could have spent, and now they're having to cut back on their spending, and this is what's starting to slow down the economy in front of us right now. We're starting to see this take place in some sectors, like the tech sector where layoffs are are already starting to begin. However, as the Federal Reserve Bank continues to raise interest rates, you can expect that it's going to continue to slow down spending and this will continue to raise unemployment because companies will have to downsize as a way to reduce their costs in a time where interest rates are rising. This is why so many people are predicting that unemployment rates will continue to go up over the next number of years. And even the Federal Reserve Bank has come out and said that they expect unemployment rate to rise for the next number of years because of the interest 
interest rate hikes to fight inflation. This is where it goes back to the first question that I asked you in this video. What's going to break first? Is it going to be inflation or is it going to be the markets? Because if the Fed now continues raising interest rates, that is going to hurt this and that is going to hurt the markets. But if inflation does not come down and they're still raising interest rates, you can bet that that's going to hurt the economy. You can bet that that's going to hurt asset prices from stocks to crypto to real estate. And that will continue to happen as long as the Fed continues to fight this. However, if inflation starts to break and then they can start stimulating this, well, then you could see the opposite happen because the Fed might say, all right, we're going to ignore the inflation problem for a little bit, even though inflation is still bad. Maybe it's not as bad as what it was, but we're going to ignore the inflation problem and we're going to start worrying about this. Because if we start to see the markets break first, meaning now the economy is slowing down, markets are going down, and the Fed is more worried about the economic side than the inflation side, and the Fed could potentially turn around and say, we're going to start creating more inflation. We're going to start cutting interest rates to support the economy, to support the unemployment numbers, to support the markets, to help bring the markets back up. But that's going to come at a price. It's going to come at the price of higher inflation, meaning now you have to pay more to buy regular stuff. But hey, at least people have jobs versus you fight inflation, you take care of the inflation problem, but there's a price to that as well. The price to this is we're going to have higher unemployment. We're going to see asset prices go down. We're going to see markets get hurt. However, at least you can save the long-term health of the dollar and the economy through the short-term pain. So what is the Federal Reserve Bank going to do? Well, they're going to weigh this against this, and then they're going to decide what they want to continue doing. If inflation is heavier, and inflation is a bigger problem, they will continue raising interest rates because they're going to say this inflation problem is a bigger issue than this unemployment, economic, and recession problem. However, what you're going to start to see over the next number of months is most likely you're going to start to see this start to become a bigger weighted issue. The question is, is this going to be a more significant issue to the Federal Reserve Bank than this until this is solved? And we don't know the answer to that, which is why you have to pay attention to what's going on. And of course, we're going to be covering this on Market Briefs every day. So if you haven't subscribed to Market Briefs yet, make sure you do that. The link is for you down in the description. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see why layoffs are going to get worse, I made a video covering this and you can watch that video by clicking this button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep Hustling. And the concern now is, are these layoffs going to spill over into the rest of the economy? Because now when people get laid off, you're not going to have money to go out and buy a car. You're not going to have money to 